joined now by Jean Klein, a survivor of the Holocaust, and by his daughter, Dr. Jill Klein, uh, the author of We Got the Water, Tracing My Family's Path Through Auschwitz. And to Jean Klein and to Dr. Jill Klein, we welcome you both to America's Forum. We appreciate your time this afternoon very much. Uh, Dr. Klein, what can you tell us about the message of your book? Well, I think um, the, the message of the book is, you know, what we are capable of doing to each other. And then the perseverance of my father and his sisters, his family, uh, through the very difficult time of the Holocaust. But I think it shows, really does show what intolerance can do when it's brought to its extreme worst point. Jean Klein, how old were you when you were in Auschwitz? I was 16 at the time. Wow. So 16, really a coming of age. And what, what a horrific experience. When you look back at that time, is there one central incident, one central encounter that, that sticks with you th throughout that entire uh, traumatic experience? Well, of course, I have several, but the main thing that I can tell you about I was in Auschwitz first, and I was shipped out to Wolfsburg, which was a slave labor camp. And I was into my sixth month of imprisonment. And one morning, an SS sergeant stopped right in front of me as we were standing in attention to be counted and asked, which one of you young prisoners speak German? And I put my hand up because we had to take foreign languages in our schools. And I had no idea what I got myself into, but he marched me out to the gate of the camp, and there was a man in civilian clothing. And uh, the man uh, discharged the sergeant and told me, uh, I am Mr. So-and-so. I couldn't understand why he had to introduce himself. You know, he's a German. I'm his prisoner also. And he said, I'm a civilian engineer. I'm going to be here for the next two weeks to survey the future roads that the camp will be building. And I need, you know, help with my equipment. He gave me this wooden board with the numbers on it. And he has a tripod with his equipment. And he goes way, way down the road. And once he takes some notes about what he has seen, he caught, you know, calls me to him. And we, you know, after doing six months of slave labor, this was like being on vacation. Wow. And so they, they needed your help and they needed your intellect and in the midst of you moved from slave labor to an engineering project even when the abject cruelty was going on at Auschwitz. Dr. Jill Klein, let me return to you and, and, and the geopolitical situation now. We're looking at the Ukraine. We're hearing reports that in the eastern Ukraine, Jews are being asked to register and give an accounting of, of their personal property. Do, do you worry? that the Ukraine could dissolve into something we saw uh, in the 20th century across Europe? Well, I mean, certainly if that sort of thing is actually happening, it's of tremendous concern. Uh, but it is difficult to comment because there's some real question about how that actually occurred and whether it was some sort of hoax to make the other side look bad. There's, there's a lot of shenanigans going on uh, in the Ukraine uh, with sort of anti-Semitism being used as a card that, that the two sides are trying to play against each other. So it's, it's a little bit unclear what's actually happening. What we do know, however, though, is, is a country like Hungary, and my father, uh, his hometown became part of Hungary in 1938, um, is that there's growing anti-Semitism there, a, a blatantly anti-Semitic party uh, has become the third leading party in Hungary. They have seats in Parliament. They suggest things like registering everyone and registering Jews and things like and that. This and this so is what we all have to, to monitor and uh, stand resolved against. We'll have to leave it right there. Dr. Jill Klein and Jean Klein, we thank you for your time. Again, the name of the book is We Got the Water, Tracing My Family's Path Through Auschwitz. Your reaction to the rise of anti-Semitism in modern Europe. Why don't you tweet me at Newsmax.com, a hashtag America's Forum.